In this section, we're going to talk about substitution with integration. And this is a very important section because for those of you going on to the second semester calculus, this is definitely something you're going to be using a lot in that course. In fact, the second semester calculus is talking about more integration techniques. So this one here, you want to make sure that this is very, very familiar to you because if you go on the second semester calculus, they're going to expect you already to know how to do this naturally. So this is something you want to spend some time and make sure you really understand prior to going on to second semester calculus. So what it is, it's basically the reverse steps of doing the chain rule. So chain rule we talked about a long time ago in this course. So the chain rule, remember that that's basically you have an inside and an outside function. And you basically take the derivative of the outside function and you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So that's basically what this part is. So now we're actually starting with this, we're taking the integral of this, and we're going to be going back to the original function. The capital letter F uh, is an antiderivative. Your g of x is an inside function, and your lowercase f is going to be the outside function. This information here just tells you what has to be in place in order for you to be able to do integration by substitution. So your g, your inside functions, uh, got to have a range in interval i and lowercase f is a function that's continuous on that same interval. And then your g has to be differentiable in that domain. Capital letter F is going to be antiderivative. So uh, based on all of this, you're working with the same uh, interval. Everything is uh, differentiable and continuous. Then you can, you can jump down to here. So this notation is using f and g's. If you use the notation we've used previously in this class when talking about the chain rule, your u is equal to your inside function there. You can take, basically you're doing a derivative of both sides in that case and you get this notation here, du g prime dx, and then lowercase f here, if you take the integral of that with the u inside, that turns into capital letter F. And we're, this section we're going to be talking about doing indefinite integrals uh, so we're going to have the plus c on the end here. So now that we've seen what things have to be in place in order for us to do integration by substitution, I'm now going to go ahead and show you a four-step process that we're going to be using in this section in order to integrate by substitution. Okay, so this is the procedure for, that we're going to be following in this section to integrate by substitution. You're going to look at your original equation and you're going to find the u, and again, u usually is going to be uh, an inside function, and you're going to go ahead and call that u, so we're going to let u equal uh, g of x. So this will be some expression, something inside of something else, so you want to find that uh, first. Next thing you're going to do is you're, you're going to take the derivative of both sides. Derivative of u is du. We take the derivative of this, and then we also have a dx in the end. Technically, what you're doing is when you find the derivative of u with respect to x, technically you have du over dx, and then you would multiply both sides by dx. Well, every single time it will happen where you can actually just use this formula here, du on this side, g prime of x, and then dx, you're going to have that. So once you have this complete, step three is you're going to solve for dx because you'll have a dx in your formula. So we'll solve for dx, and then you're going to substitute the dx in, and also whatever you pick for u, you're going to substitute that back in as well. So you're changing the entire problem over all into u's. Because you're replacing the d of x, that means that you're going to have an expression that has u in it, and you'll have a du as a result of part of that. That should always happen. You should always have everything cancel out except for uh, the u variable should be the only one that's left. Then once you get done with that, you're going to take that antiderivative, and then once you're done, you're going to substitute the u and the g of x back in, and that's going to be your answer. So what you're doing here, the idea of substitution is you're changing the problem to something that's easier to integrate. You're going to integrate it, and then you're going to put the complicated parts back in. So that's really the whole idea here. You're basically taking something more complicated and putting it into something that's easier to do. So now that we've gone through uh, the review of these steps, let's now take a look at an example that highlights uh, these different steps. Okay, so now we're going to go through that step-by-step -step procedure in order to uh, integrate this one by substitution. The very first step that you would normally do in a problem is you would identify what the u is. Now, this particular first introductory problems are going to give you they're going to give you the u automatically, so that way 
kind of you kind of get a feel for how to choose that on your own. But eventually, you're going to pick that you uh, on your own, and, and usually, you just look for something uh, inside of something else. We have a two x, but usually, you go for the one that has the higher power. So we're going to let u equal x squared minus nine. It already told us that before, but if this is a regular problem, I'd be choosing that from the problem itself. The second step is we got to take the derivative of both sides. The left hand side turns into du. This part, if we take the derivative, we're going to get 2x and then we're going to put a dx on the end here. That's what you always will have uh, after this derivative. Once you have that complete, step three is you're going to solve for dx and you're going to substitute it into your equation. So step three we have First, if we solve for it, we're going to get du over 2x is going to equal dx. And then still in step 3, we want to take this and substitute it into the original one. And so we're going to replace the u, the, the x squared minus 9, with u. Then we have a 2x here that's still part of that uh, integral. And then we have a dx on the end, which is du over 2x. Now, whenever you make a substitution, what you always will notice is you're going to get, usually all the x's are going to be able to cancel out for you. And so in this case, notice that what we have left over, once we make that substitution, we've taken something that looks more complicated, and now we've taken it down to a more simple uh, integral. Everything all is in terms of u. So we're just going to take the anti-derivative uh, of this, u to the fourth uh, over four, and then plus c, this is actually going to be your step four now. Step four is when you actually integrate it, and then you put the u back in. So step four here, we're going to take the antiderivative, u the fourth over four plus c. And then also in that same step, we're going to put the u back in, so we get x squared minus nine to the fourth power over four, and then uh, plus c. So then this would be your final answer, since there's no numbers here on an integral. We'll leave our answer as an indefinite integral. That's why we got to have the plus c as part of our answer.